Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm here with some more Bible stories, okay? For April the 28th, 2024. This is titled, It's Long Overdue. It's titled, Exploring the Promised Land Bible Story. Okay? This is what we're trying to get, right? Okay? Let's begin. What is the promised land? In the Bible, the term promised land refers to a specific region of land that God endowed to his chosen people as part of their heritage. Genesis 12, Genesis 26, 3, Genesis 28, 13. God first gave this pledge of land in to Abraham saying, I will establish your borders from the Red Sea to, to the Moravian Sea and from the desert to the Uphrates River. He then he, he then reiterate the vow to Abraham's descendants until the time came for his people to claim their inheritance. The promised land was the geographic area God declared to give to his chosen people, the offspring of Abraham. The promised land was placed in ancient, ancient Canaan on the eastern side of the Marian Sea, Numbers 34, 1-12. Discusses the location of the promised land. The promised land of Canaan. The Lord said to Moses, Command the Israelites and say to them, When you enter Canaan, the land that will be allotted to you as an inheritance is to have the boundaries. Your southern side will include some of the of the desert of Zin along the border of Edom. Your southern boundary will start in the east from the southern end of the Dead Sea, cross south of Scorpion Pass, continue on to Zin, and go south of Kadesh Barnea. Then we go to Hazar Adai and over to the Asmon, where it will turn and join the Radi of Egypt and end at the Marian Sea. Your western boundary will be the coast of the Marian Sea. This will be your boundary on the wrist. For your northern boundary run a line from the Marian Sea to Mount Hor and from Mount Hor to Lebo Hamet. Then the boundary will go to Zedai, continue to Zisran, and end at Hazar and then. This will be your boundary on the north. For your eastern boundary, run a line from Hazard Inman to Shepham. The boundary will go down from Shepham to Ribla on the east side of Inn and continue along the slopes east of the Sea of Galilee. Then the boundary will go down along the Jordan and end in the Dead Sea. This will be your land with the boundaries on every side. For migrating herders like the Jews, having a stable home of their own will be a true blessing. The promised land was a place to rest from their continued wandering, but this promise came with conditions. First, God commanded that Israel, the name of the new nation, had to fuss and follow him. Second, God demanded faithful worship of him, Deuteronomy 7, 12-15. Adashri was such a grave transgression to God that he threatened to remove them out of the promised land if they worshipped the other gods. Though a famine, Jacob, also named Israel, went to Egypt with his family where there was food. Over the years, the Egyptians turned the Jews into slaves for labor. Hey, it might be about that ass too, but I know we getting one too, though, no day. That's what they told me, so. After God delivered them from that slavery, he returned them to the promised land, see, under the guidance of Moses. However, because the people neglected to obey God's law, he made them wander in the desert for 40 years until their generation had died. Moses here, Josh, Joshua, finally led the people in and served as the military commander in taking over the promised land. Following Joshua's death, Israel was ruled by a succession of judges. The people frequently regressed to idolize false gods and suffer due consequences. Eventually, God allowed the Babylonians to destroy the Jerusalem temple, yes, you right, and take most of the Jews into bondage to Babylon. Ultimately, they returned to the promised land, but under Israel's king's devotion to God was inconsistent. God sent prophets to remind his people to repent, concluding with John the Baptist. What made the promised land unique? The promised land of Canaan eventually called Israel was a fertile land with books and deep springs that gushed out into the valleys and hills. 
the rich soil produced wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates and olives. There, the Israelites would lack nothing. Described in scripture as a land flowing with milk and honey. The soil was rich for agriculture and sharpening. The mountains provided security and protection from the elements and their enemies. And the arid climate provided perfect conditions for livestock to drive, which is us. Exodus 317, Numbers 1327, Deuteronomy 8-6-9. Abraham knew that he would not see God's promised land with his own eyes. In fact, God made it clear to him that the land would not be given until four generations had passed, and that his descendants would face the hardship of slavery before they would enjoy the home God had promised. Genesis 15, 12-16. But Abraham held on to the promise believing that God could and would bring his descendants into their promised land. When will God's promise be fulfilled? In preparation to fulfill the promise he made to Abraham and his descendants, God placed Abraham's great-grandson, Joseph, in Egypt. When a seven-year famine made it increasingly difficult for the Israelites to find food, God lost Joseph's high position under Pharaoh to save his people, the Israelites, from starvation. After jo- Joseph's generation died, the Israelites continued to drive in Egypt. Then a new king, to whom Joseph meant nothing, came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Come, we must deal surely with them, or they will become even more numerous, and if war breaks out, we join our enemies. Fight against us and leave the country. Exodus 1, 8-10 For 400 years, 2020, the Egyptians forced God's people into harsh, not us, and brutal slave labor, but, oh yeah, we kind of did. My bad. But this didn't keep them from multiplying and spreading. In fact, the Egyptians became so fearful of Israel's population, explosion that Pharaoh eventually ordered the prompt murder of all the Hebrew newborn males. Exodus 1 2 2. Moses was among the newborn babies to be slain. However, just as God had predestined Joseph to save his people from famine, He spared Moses' life so that he could lose him to deliver Israel from Egypt's oppression and only lead them into the land promised to Abraham's descendants, Exodus 2, 23-25. After Moses led God's people out of Egypt and through the Red Sea, the time had finally come for Israel to realize the fulfillment of God's longer-rated promise. In one miraculous display after another, God had clearly shown himself mighty to save. Now, the Israelites, yes, that's us, needed only to believe God and follow his servants, Moses, into the depths of wilderness that would lead them to the promised land. The faith of Joshua and the fear of Israel. Though their deliverance from Egypt, the Israelites had witnessed firsthand God's provision his power and his faithfulness to the promises made to their ancestors. Genesis 15, 14, Exodus 15, 1 through 21. And God continued to provide for all their needs as they began their journey to Canaan. God provided food and water. Exodus 16, 12 through 15, Exodus 15, 25. He provided clothes and shoes that never wore out. Who? Deuteronomy 29, 5. He gave them his law. See? Exodus 5, 6 through 21. And most importantly, God gave the Israelites the gift of his sheltering and guiding presence. Who? Exodus 13, 21. <laughs> when the Israelites reached the border of the promised land in Kadesh Barni, God instructed Moses to send out for yourself men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. Yes. Until that time, the whole region near Canaan had been inhabited by wicked nations who were driven by idolatry. 
the shamedi nine five nine four because of the sinful nature of the nations, not because of Israel's righteousness. God determined to drive them out and turn the land over to his children. But when Israel's spies returned from their survey of the land, they were afraid and spread their fear to the Israelites. Instead of trusting, the, trusting in God's continued deliverance and provision, the spies relied on their own flawed wisdom who, based on the dangers they saw during their expedition. Their report included tales of unconquerable rulers, who, impossible eyes, hell yeah, and superhuman giants, yes. Numbers 13.32 Of the frail spies, only Joshua and Caleb spoke the truth about Canaan based on God's promise. The land was passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flown with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land. See, yeah. Because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Numbers 14, 6 through 7. The doubting Israelites wanted to stone Josh Joshua and Caleb after their faith filled report. They couldn't imagine overcoming the odds stacked against them. They fell into deep despair and wept bitterly. Disgusted with the Israelites' continued unbelief, grumbling and complaining, God concealed destroying the, his people with a plague. Numbers 14.11 Until Moses interceded. Who? Although God chose to forgive his people, their unbelief had cost them the privilege of ever entering the land of promise. Numbers 14.23 Instead, they will wander the wilderness for 40 years until all the adults were buried right outside the border of the promised land. Then their children will have a chance to prove themselves faithful to God and enter Canaan. Only Joshua and Caleb, the two faithful spies, were exempt from God's just punishment. What can we learn from this Bible story? The Israelites' wilderness situation was ordained to get them ready for the promise. Unfortunately, their patterns of behavior kept them stuck for far longer than God intended, who explains Vittorio Villoneno. The Israelites' continued acts of rebellion was an outward manifestation of a much bigger issue, their lack of faith. Even though God had repeatedly demonstrated his truthworthiness, trustworthiness to the Israelites, they allowed fear to keep them from resting in his continued provision. That same unchecked fear would eventually keep them from entering the land God had promised. Believers are faced with the choice between faith and fear on a regular basis. In fact, James 1.3 tells us that God tests our faith on purpose so that he can produce in our preservance and maturity in Christ. Thank you. Oh, my God. The good news is that we don't have to combat fear alone. We are invited to cast our cares on God, and we are promised that his perfect love casts out all fear. 1 Peter 5, 7, 1 John 4, 18. The new promised land, kingdom of heaven. When Jesus Christ arrived in Israel, he brought a new covenant accessible to all people, Jews and Gentiles alike. At the end of Hebrews 11, the popular Hall of Faith session, scripture remarks that people of the Old Testament was all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Hebrews 11.39 They may have received the land, but they still look to the future for the Messiah. That Messiah is Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in Christ as their Savior becomes a resident of the kingdom of God. As Jesus explained to Pontius Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my erase by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. John 18.36 we mind the child that the children of Israel was on their way to a new land and that God, see, was guiding them with a pillar of fire and cloud. As the child, that the, the machines came here, the machines were for them. Oh my God. How'd they get it? The fucking monkey paw. 
Ask the child if they have ever been afraid and talk about some things that scared them. Oh, this for my Bible kids, my Bible school kids. Okay, anyway, same thing. Some of them already did, okay? Talk about some things that scared them. Point out that everyone gets afraid sometimes, but God can give us courage. Blow up a balloon, losing a marker, oh, draw a picture of some of their fears and even your own. These can be very simple pictures. Point out how big and scary the fear seem. Take a sharp object and pop the balloon or let the air out. Show how most of the fears were nothing more than air. Lose this to demonstrate to the child how often we are afraid of something that we shouldn't be and that with God we don't need to be afraid. God wanted to have a census and organize the people of Israel. Explain to the child that organize means to put things in order and a census means to count people. Depending on the child's age, you can do a census of their toys and arrange them. Gather 12 objects, coins, pebbles, marbles, etc. with the same weights and one very heavy item. Make a simple scale, place a hanger on a doorknob. Tie a piece of string to each side with a cup on each end. You can now lose this scale for this object lesson. Further instructions. Count as you place two objects in one side and ten in the other. Show how the ten objects outweigh the two objects. Then take the very heavy object and place in the cup with the two objects. The scale will tip to that side. Lose this to show that God's opinion should carry more weight with us than everyone else combined. Remind the child that what God says is right, no matter what other people say. Pray with your, you know, meditate with your child and ask Jesus to help you stand up for what God says and not be afraid. Also, they did a I Spy game. Help explain what it means to spy by playing I Spy with your child. Depending on age, you could lose letters or colors. Explain how the spies went into the promised land to see what they could find. They also did a fruit banquet. The promised land was full of milk and honey and delicious fruit. Why not have a nice snack with your child's favorite fruit and food? Thank God together for giving you things to enjoy. And they did a toy census. It is unlikely that your child will know what a census is, yet they will understand counting and sorting, losing their toys or craft materials, sort items together. For example, toy cars, blocks, crayons, then count them to see how many of each they have. Okay, y'all. So, yeah, that's basically the the activity we do. And this is the story, exploring the, the promised land. Okay, enjoy y'all.